Okay, thank you everyone. Um, well, welcome to the College Orientation Summer Series webinar. My name is Stephanie Mardall from CPO College Programming and Orientation. I'm currently the graduate intern for this summer and I'll be serving as the moderator for this webinar today. So today's panel is Biological Sciences panel and in the Biological Sciences Collegiate Division, BSCD, students can study life in all of its forms. Today, you're going to hear from current biological science majors and minors about their academic journeys and experience with the biological science collegiate divisions. So today we are joined by several current students and UCMP mentors who are here to share about their own academic journey. First, we'll have the panelists introduce themselves and then we will move into a Q&A portion. Um, we have already ahead of time collected a variety of questions from the registration forms, which we will first start with. However, if you do have any additional questions, please feel free to add them at the bottom to the Q&A version of the chat. Um, and please note that you're able to see which questions have already been provided and event of vote questions if you are also interested in them. So we'll go ahead and start with the panelists' introductions. Um, Jillian, if you want to start. Hi everyone, my name is Jillian Turnin. I'm a third year in the college. I'm a pre-med neuroscience major and biology chemistry double minor. And um, a little bit about what I do around campus. I'm involved in a research lab at UChicago Medicine. It's a neuro-oncology research lab and also uh, involved in shadowing in the neurosurgery department. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for the biologically related things. Also, um, future path, I am going to be applying to a variety of MD, PhD programs in less than a year. And eventually I would like to do neurosurgery as well as neuro-oncology and immunotherapy research. Um, I have really loved, excuse me, my um, experience so far at UChicago in the biological sciences and neuroscience fields. I have found it to be a really, really supportive major with a ton of great opportunities and especially great connections to uh, the medical school and the medical campus if you are interested in medicine or any sort of medically related research. Uh, super easy to get involved with shadowing or research over there and I have really loved it so far. I've also loved a lot of my classes in this field. Uh, if any of you are interested in neuroscience and biology, I highly uh, recommend the class Neuropharmacology, and perhaps I'll talk about it a little bit later, but that is my favorite class I've taken so far here. It is fascinating about how drugs interact with the brain. So yeah, that's a little bit about what I have done here so far, and I hope that you enjoy the panel. Thank you, Katie. Hi, my name is Katie. I'm a rising fourth year. Um, I'm a bio major, uh, environmental and urban studies minor, um, and I am on the life ecosystems evolution track, uh, which is formerly known as track C. Um, outside of academics, I am a member of the women's basketball team. Uh, I'm involved with the Women's Athletic Association, as well as pre-orientation, specifically Chicago Urban Explorers. Um, so a little bit about how my path. Um, like I said, I'm on the life ecosystems and evolution track. Um, and I am currently interning with the Field Museum in the Keller Science Action Center, working on a variety of projects related to biodiversity uh, awareness and conservation, uh, both in Chicago as well as in Guyana, um, which is a small country in South America. Um, something that I have really enjoyed about this major is that the electives are super unique um, and can be tailored to your interests. Uh, so for example, this past spring, I was able to be in a field ecology class um, with Steve Pritt Jones, he's amazing, um, where I learned a lot of grad school skills as well as uh, field work skills. So if you want to do uh, research, um, which is something that I am looking into. It, it was extremely helpful um, and kind of put me in the right place to, you know, prepare for what grad school is going is going to look like, whether I am pursuing a master's or, or a doctorate. Thank you, Phoebe. 
Hey y'all, I'm Phoebe. Um, I'm from California. I'm a neuroscience major with a minor in linguistics. I am non-pre-med. Um, outside of academics, um, I am a model UN at UChicago. Um, I'm also involved in Greek life and I also run the neuroscience club. So I hope that you guys will join in the fall. Um, I am also a research assistant this summer at the Sheffield lab and we look at play cells in the hippocampus, which help with spatial localization and memory formation. Um, I'm very grateful to have my lab job. I think it is definitely the highlight of my time here so far. Um, I am here to help with any research related questions. I am looking to go into academia and teach at a university level. Um, I think what really inspired me to do that was my classes here and my professors who are wonderful mentors. Um, so if you have any questions about research or club involvement related to science, I'm here to help you with that. Awesome, thank you. And lastly, Karina. Hi hey everyone, my name is Karina. I'm a rising second year from Naperville, Illinois, and I'm currently a pre-med biology major who's planning to specialize in global health and also minor in visual arts. Um, as of right now, I'm hoping to become a pediatrician in the future, but we'll see uh, how, where that goes. Um, outside of classes, I'm part of Bite Magazine, Asian American InterRSI, and the Global Health Alliance. This past year, I was also volunteering as a Cantonese interpreter for Bridgeport Free Clinic. Um, and then during spring quarter, I started working uh, for a pul the pulmonary clinic at Mitchell Hospital, and I help uh, screen patients for eligibility and research studies regarding interstitial lung disease. Um, and I'm also currently working as a research assistant for diabetes research through the CIH Fellowship, which focuses on community and social medicine research. Um, I am on the molecule molecules to organisms um, bio track, um, and I really loved that in that track, you switch professors um, multiple times during the quarter, and I really love um, Mr. Conforst. Um, and I think that track was not exactly what I was expecting, but I got a chance to learn a lot more um, about diverse areas of science that I um, hadn't really learned in high school, and I have really loved that track so far. Um, and I ended up designing to add a minor for visual arts during um, winter quarter this past year, just because I took art to fulfill my core requirement, but really love my professor and she encouraged me to minor in visual arts. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to so far. Amazing, thank you. Well, we definitely have some exciting panelists today, um, but as a reminder, before we jump into the Q&A, these are all current students that are assisting with the panels who will be sharing about their personal experiences at UChicago. Um, so please know if you have specific questions about sequences, placement tests, or anything else very specific to you, we really encourage you to reach out to your signed academic advisor who can best support you. Our goal today is for you to hear from current students about their academic journey. So if you all are ready, we are just going to jump right in. Um, our first question for the panelists is, how did you work with your academic advisor to coordinate your academic plan and plan out courses? I can go ahead and get us started. Um, so, one thing, I mean, as a first year, you have required you have one required meeting per quarter um, to meet with your academic advisor. Um, so going into those meetings, I always made sure to look at the course catalog um, and check out, you know, the programs of study to see what all was required for any major or minor that I was looking into. Um, they also list the availability of those classes, whether they will occur in fall, winter, spring, summer, or in all of the above. Um, so that there, the course catalog is a great resource um, that can kind of point you in the right direction and kind of prepare you so that you can ask the right questions with your academic advisor, um, which I found to be very helpful so that it, I could always be direct to the point and make sure that I got all of my questions answered um, in an efficient manner. I think another thing that's really helpful is using uh, My Planner or Stellic, which is, you can find it, it's a little tool on your uh, my.uchicago. And that's something that I used uh, when I met up with my academic advisor this past year, because I was still kind of changing between sequences for my bio major. And it was really helpful because he could see what I was planning to do and I could play around with it. Um, and it'll show you what you need to fulfill your core and fulfill your bio, uh, your major requirements. Um, and I think that was a really helpful tool just so I could better visualize everything. Thank you. 
Our next question is, how has your plans changed or ebbed and flowed over the years? I can take this one. I actually came in thinking that I would double major in both neuroscience and linguistics, um, and I was briefly considering being pre-med. Pre um, I think one of the more important things was that as you take classes and as you talk to upperclassmen um, and grad students who are in the field, you kind of figure out what you want to do. I would really encourage you guys to reach out to people in the field that you're interested in, and that gives you a gauge of, do you actually want to do it? Um, do you actually want to you know, put in the work and time to pursue it? Um, so I learned better to balance my work and social life and realized that I wanted to be more involved with RSOs and volunteer opportunities instead of like completely 100% pushing myself to do academics. Um, it would personally, it personally gave me a better college experience and I'm very fulfilled with the track that I'm currently on. Um, so I would suggest be open to new experiences and definitely talk to the experts in your field. I would definitely second that. One funny thing is that Phoebe and I had almost the exact same plan coming into U Chicago. Um, I also was gonna do linguistics and neuro uh, pre-med. But then just like Phoebe, I uh, realized in taking classes, things that I didn't like as much as I thought I did. And some things that also I liked way more than I thought I did. For example, organic chemistry was one of my favorite classes I've taken here. So that's actually what made me want to do my chem minor. So yeah, you will definitely be surprised, I think, by the things that you find that you really enjoy. And um, it's just great that you get to uh, explore all of these things in your four years here. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, I think Katie just sent that in the chat. Is there any other resources that you all would suggest for students to use in planning? I can just expand on my chat. So Wiser is just like a networking site where you can um, schedule phone calls, video calls, or even if they're in the same area that you are, schedule like a job shadowing um, to with whatever profession it is. Um, they've got a whole list of things that you can, that whole list of topics um, that you're able to look into. Um, and that's actually how I've kind of narrowed down uh, that I want to pursue something within research. Um, I've looked into being going to law school or going even possibly into like consulting uh, related to, um, you know, uh, like conservation. Um, and just through having those phone calls and those conversations, I've really kind of been able to narrow down and like find similarities with um, the people in research. And I find that I resonate most with that. And so that's the path that I've chosen to pursue. Um, and so just talking to people who experience their, whose everyday life is, is the career that you might want um, has been extremely eye-opening and helpful for me. Great, thank you. Um, how do you all choose and organize your classes and how do you know how many classes to take and in what order? I would say most of the information is pretty clearly laid out on the course catalog website um, as to which sequences that you do have to take and what electives and related electives you have to do. Um, your academic advisor is a great resource, as um, Katie and Karina said, um, but also I actually spend a lot of time with upperclassmen um, and talking to professors, especially the undergraduate um, directors for your uh, respective majors. They're really helpful in recommending classes and helping you plan out um, which electives you want to take because you can pick and choose, obviously. And there are rec great recommendations for which professors are good to work with um, and which classes are really interesting for them. Um, so they're also a great re resource in helping me at least plan out my classes. And I know a question that a lot of people have going into first year is three versus four classes, not just in your first quarter, but sort of as you go throughout your college experience. And um, I decided to do four classes personally my first quarter. And I really like that because I got to do a fun class. And generally um, throughout my first year, I tried to do one fun class per quarter and then three that were sort of required. So um, you can definitely um, use that fourth class for something that you really want to explore. You don't have to always just get a ton of requirements done right away. But um, 
I would definitely say that it's easier on your lifestyle sometimes if you take three, but you're also, you know, learning something you're really passionate about sometimes when you take four. So it's a personal choice and there's no right or wrong way to do it, especially in that first year. Awesome. Thank you. What is the best or most common classes to take as a first year? I mean, there's humanities, obviously. Um, I, with with a bio major, um, there are a couple of required uh, courses that you take during your first year. Um, during at least for the life ecosystems evolution track, the first one you take is the fundamentals of ecology and evolution. Um, and that class was really awesome because it was like just kind of like glancing over all of the things that I want to pursue and like that I'm interested in. So it was a great introduction to the major for me. Um, and then following that, there's a quantitative course that you take um, and then another fundamentals course that you take. Um, which again, all of this is outlined on, on the course catalog. Um, but most of these classes are just pretty relatively introductory. You do get into some specifics, um, but you know, it's pretty uh, general enough that it's, uh, it's easy to follow along with if, if you are not um, specifically on that track. Uh, for example, if you're taking cell bio and your you know, molecules to so organisms, that's gonna be more up your alley than someone who's looking into you know, larger ecosystem uh, dynamics. I think all of you also have to take chemistry, whether that be general chemistry or honors chemistry. And also I recommend getting your math requirements out of the way your first year. Um, I think most people wait to take physics especially for pre-med until second or third year, or maybe even fourth year. Sorry, I'm gonna talk again. Um, but just building onto that, I'd suggest, you know, trying to get as much of like your core classes kind of out of the way, like taking your math requirement, uh, take an art class, um, and just those kind of one or two class sequences um, that are going to be more of a, well, calculus might not be, a break. It wasn't a break for me personally, um, but you know, art class is kind of like a, a breath of fresh air instead of always looking at like math and hard science stuff. It's looking at something different. Um, so like uh, Jillian was talking about where she kind of had um, one class to do something fun. I would definitely suggest trying to do that with your with your core classes. And plus there's so many um, and so many different topics that you can cover that it's it's easy to find something that that you would like within those. Great, thank you everyone. Um, the next question is, what is the class registration slash pre-registration process look like? And to give our panelists an insight, um, humanities class pre-registration took place in June. So students should have received that placement this week. Um, so besides knowing that, how would you answer this question? I can answer again. Um, so pre-registration for me, I always am sure to look, I keep repeating this, the course catalog. Um, it's a great resource. I always look at that because I also get to see, it lists all the electives on there too. So then I can see, you know, what sorts of electives I might be interested in. Once pre-registration is live, that's when it confirms kind of what electives are available. Um, so from there, you can look at course evaluations, professor evaluations, um, which those are really key to find if that class will really be interesting and applicable um, to you and your um, education. Um, other than that, you might get all the classes you request, you might get none of them, and there's always add drop. Um, so I wouldn't be, it, it, it gets a little nerve wracking, but I wouldn't be too stressed out about it because um, it all ends up working out in the end. Um, there was one quarter where I didn't get into, I think it was like three out of the four classes I requested. I add dropped into two of them and then I saved the other one for later and I added in one, um, a random class from the environmental and urban studies program. Um, and that's kind of what initiated my minor. Um, and so, yeah, it'll, it'll all work out. 
Yeah, I routinely get one class out of the 10 that I request every quarter and I'm still here, so you'll be fine. Also, um, I would like to take this time to plug the uh, UCMP Peer Mentor Directory because there are plenty of experienced students on there who have probably taken a class that you're interested in. And I personally have found that asking students questions uh, that have already taken the class is really helpful in terms of, for me, figuring out workload and uh, figuring out if that's what the class description says or if it's a little bit different once you actually get into it. So. Yes, uh, asking people who have been there before or trying to find someone through maybe your peer mentor would be a tip that I would have. I think also I wanted to second, especially the evaluations that you should have at EDU is really helpful. Um, also, if the class specifically isn't available to look, just look for the professor, I think that really helps you narrow down what you want to take or who you want to take your classes with. Um, and secondly, the idea that um, uh, pre registration isn't um, time like time sensitive, so it's not first come first serve uh, like ad drop is. I think that gave me a lot of relief first year because I wasn't worried about like being right there, being the first one, or that it would fill up right away. Um, but yeah, I would also say that ad drop is really helpful. I ended up dropping a class my first quarter, and I think that it gave me the flexibility to pursue a minor that I wouldn't have if I just stuck with my original plan. Thank you. Um, so focusing more on core classes, one question is, if you're undecided, how can you use the core to best figure it out? I can start with this one. Um, so I don't know so much about the, you know, being undecided in the sciences and trying to figure it out through that core because it's so different with, um, you know, all the different requirements. But for humanities, I would definitely say that um, you can take a class in the humanities, uh, or sorry, in one of the humanities sections. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm so sorry. Uh, that is, you know, something of, that you're interested in. For example, I thought maybe I wanted to do an architecture minor at one point. So I took two architecture art core classes and I found that it was really interesting, but I like, I don't really like reading about architecture. I like appreciating it with my eyes and that's pretty much it. So that helped me to figure out that maybe I wasn't going to be doing that. But um, yeah, I would definitely say that you can look for those more niche classes that still work for the core, especially in things like arts core where things can work for a major or the core uh, and try to use those to figure it out. So those are always super interesting. Uh, same thing for Civ when you eventually get there. Some really interesting history classes that are sort of uh, specific, like that you wouldn't find uh, in some of the more broader, uh, more broad core classes like Hume or Soch. I'd say for the biological sciences major itself, um, you know, the the first three, four introductory classes or fundamentals classes that you're taking is universal across the across the major. Um, so across all the tracks. Um, and those are, you know, fundamentals of ecology and evolution, uh, fundamentals of genetics and fundamentals of cell bio. Um, so I think through taking those three classes, they're so different in, all, in and of themselves. Um, that that will definitely be able to kind of help you navigate, um, you know, just which um, which track you would like to pursue within within the major. Awesome, thank you. What advice do you all have for first years regarding core course selection? I would say maybe don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, there are a lot of different options. Um, the Hume that I actually took, I took uh, readings in world literature. Um, that was not one that I requested on my pre-registration at all. Um, I ended up having a fantastic professor um, who, yeah, she was just amazing. She helped me grow so much as a writer. Um, and 
yeah, it really helped me to understand these like epics that we were reading that I had never before interacted with um, and made it in a way that was understandable so that I could actually like learn from the material and write a coherent uh, paper about it. Um, so yeah, I would just advise you to be open to other options in case you don't get the specific course that you that you pre-registered for. I think it's also really important to be in touch with your academic advisor and talking with them, especially if you do get in, get into a class that you were not or did not plan to get into or you, that you didn't get into a class. Um, for me, both fall and spring quarter, I did not get into a human class. And I think I was very, very stressed out about it during fall quarter because I wasn't like, like I never got a placement, um, but I was able to talk to my academic advisor and I got placed into uh, media aesthetics, which wasn't my first choice, but it ended up being my favorite class pretty much every quarter. Um, and yeah, I think it's really helpful because your academic advisor can also direct you to other people that you might need to contact if you are needing to like email the professor directly or something um, like that. They're, they're your first resource and they're really helpful in that sense. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Um, these next questions are for you, Jillian, as a double major slash minor. So can one class count towards both major, double majors or double minor? Um, and how hard is it to double major? Yeah, so the one about classes double counting, that really depends, especially on um, how specific the class is. So like things like um, Gen Chem, for example, you can't just take Gen Chem twice. It, it has to count for both. There's really no alternative. But in cases where there all are alternatives, like in electives, um, a lot of times those won't be able to double count. This is for minors specifically. Um, for majors, I think that there can be more overlap. But for minors, generally, if you're doing the minor, they want you to take as many unique classes in that minor as possible. So uh, my cannot really count, for example, classes both toward my neuroscience major and my biology minor or classes to both my biology and chemistry minors. But um, in general, I would say that planning still isn't that difficult uh, because of the classes that are required to overlap in both. And then the other question about that was how hard is it to? Um, honestly, we're on the quarter system. We have the choice between three and four classes every single quarter. If you want to make something happen, chances are you probably will be able to. And um, you know, if you're not able to make something happen, you can always change that major into a minor or just take a bunch of electives in that area. So in general, I think you should be able to study pretty much everything you'd like to study during your time here. I see a little thing about biological science and social science. Not quite sure about that as all of mine are sort of in the STEM field. But uh, in general, from what I have done so far, I have found it to be completely manageable and quite fun. Great, thank you so much. Um, these next set of questions is more about academic involvement for everyone. Um, what opportunities exist outside of the classroom in regards to my division or major? Research and shadowing. Uh, I saw a question down here that was, how can you get into shadowing, which is um, both if you're interested in health careers and if you're not, still super interesting to sort of be able to apply these things that you're learning in the classroom to actual patients and actual people. Um, so to get into research or shadowing, really something that you should do is just reach out. Uh, cold emailing is something you may have heard of before, and I'm sure that most of us here have probably all been through that. You basically just send out an email to a bunch of professors or doctors whom you are interested in and say, hello, this is who I am, this is my resume, and I'm really interested in the work that you do. And if they are nice and have room for you, then they might take you on. And that is a really cool thing. So that's how I was able to get into both research and shadowing is just by reaching out and having someone very nice say, yes, sure, I'd like to have you. So I would say that that is my favorite thing that I get to do outside of class. And it really helps me in class as well, because again, I get to apply those things um, to what I'm learning. And uh, yeah, there are also opportunities through RSOs and Phoebe knows a lot about that. 
Uh, yeah, sure. I will actually second the um, cold emailing thing. I cold emailed my PI my first year and I was like, please, for the love of God, I'm a first year with no research experience, let me in. Um, and he let me in. So uh, if you find professors who have um, open positions in their labs, um, they will most likely take you on as an undergrad because they understand what it's like to come in with no experience. Um, and honestly, I, I saw a question in the Q&A um, that was, you know, how was it finding a research position? It was actually um, pretty, it was, it was nerve wracking, but honestly, once you find one, you kind of just onboard um, and then you apply for grants. Um, so I am getting paid through the NeuroMedCap program this summer um, and they're funding my research, which is, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, definitely reach out to as many people as you um, are interested in um, and most likely someone will take you on. Um, and in terms of club involvement, so I run the neuroscience club on campus. Um, we do a lot of internal education. So a lot of members will come and talk about their research. We invite faculty from both the university and outside to talk about their work as well. Um, so you will get a rotation of professors talking to you about their research, which is really interesting. And that's also how you can get to know about their labs. Um, and that gives you a, an opportunity to be like, hey, I heard your talk. Um, can I join your lab? I really like your research. Um, we also teach high school students in the Chicago area. So we design our own neuroscience curriculum um, and we teach every winter quarter. Uh, that's my favorite part of um, the RSO and it's a great um, social space for neuroscience majors, um, including psych majors and bio majors. Um, it's a great intersection. So that's my plug at least. I will say if you're looking to do research outside of the university, Handshake is a great resource. Um, that is how I found my first position. I interned at the Field Museum the summer after my first year um, in person. It was awesome. I had like a little key card to like buzz into the door and everything. I felt so cool. Um, <laughs> but um, anyways, I, I found that position through through Handshake, um, and I, it was through uh, the Metcalf, the Odyssey Metcalf internship program. So I was paid through, um, through the Metcalf funding, um, and then uh, I was on such good terms with my professor, or that with my supervisor, that he actually was able to reach out on my behalf um, the following May, like May of the of my second year, um, in the middle of COVID. Um, and I was able to find uh, one of his colleagues who was looking for a remote intern. Um, and I have been interning with them for over a year now, ever since, and I'm basing my uh, undergraduate thesis on the projects that I'm, I'm working on with them. So Handshake is an amazing resource um, and it has just about anything under the sun that you can, that you can look for. Um, and it's also really great to use if you're looking for something in your hometown um, that's outside of Chicago as well. I think it's also really helpful to um, talk to upperclassmen. I uh, was telling my RA about um, my interest in being pre-med and she ended up uh, quitting pre-med that year and I ended up being able to get her position because she let me know about, know about it and uh, she knew that I was pre-med. Um, and for my... Uh, volunteer position as a candidate interpreter at the Bridgeport Free Clinic. I also heard about that just from talking to other upperclassmen um, and hearing that they were involved in this and asking about how I could also be involved. So I think especially for um, opportunities where uh, maybe they're not like published yet, it's really helpful if you are already talking to people and they can help you um, or at least guide you to the people that might be able to help you. Really quickly, while we're on the topic of research, going back to the cold emailing, when is a good time to cold email professors about research? I uh, ended up cold emailing in my spring quarter, which didn't work out great because that's when everything with COVID was starting to take off. But in general, uh, I would still suggest spring quarter because you will have taken two to three quarters of U Chicago classes, especially STEM classes. So you'll know what you are and aren't interested in, at least at a very basic level. And from there, you can sort of have a better idea of which labs you're interested in rather than just seeing one of the big U Chicago names. Not that those aren't great, but just, you know, 
you might learn about some smaller labs through your classes that you're really interested in. Uh, and then in addition to that, that's uh, a good time that you could get some summer opportunities and also set things up for the next academic year. So um, yeah, that is what I would say for when I cold email. Great, thank you. Um, and our last pre-registration question is how important is it to build relationships with your professors and how do you do that? I would say that building those relationships is, is very important, um, not just for looking for research opportunities, but just so that you're able to really understand the material as well and so that you're interested in that. Um, one thing I found that helps is that is going to office hours. Um, it, as well as emailing professors questions, um, sitting at the front of the class and raising your hand to ask questions. Um, it shows initiative and it shows that you care and professors definitely appreciate your participation and involvement, um, both in class as well as outside of class with any material that is covered. Um, and office hours are usually the time when they're most kind of low key laid back um, and that's the time when you really get to know your professor um, and I thought and, and your TAs as well. Um, office hours with TAs tend to be extremely helpful in terms of covering material as well. So um, yeah, that's that's the advice that I would give is, is going to office hours. Great, thank you. Um, one question we have from a student is, I am a mathematics major, but I aspire to someday work in but the biotechnology industry, what classes would be best for me to take? Um, a good crossover between um, bio and math are any of the quantitative courses with uh, uh, Dr. Dmitry Kondrashov. Um, he teaches quite a few quantitative as well as math modeling um, related to bio courses um, and that I've been able to take. Um, and as well as our work, you, you have to take a certain number of quantitative courses within the uh, life ecosystems evolution track. Um, so through, through those classes, you just learn basic kind of coding. Um, and different types of, of programming and functions um, to run these different different models. So yeah, uh, look up um, Dmitry Kondrashov and all of his courses. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question we have is, did any of you take advanced bio fundamentals in fall quarter? And what is that like versus regular bio? So I started out with the advanced bio sequence during my fall quarter, um, and I ended up switching to the molecule to molecules to organisms sequence, which started in the winter quarter, um, because it, I felt like it would be better for me personally, and it also gave me like fle more flexibility to pursue my minor. Um, but I think the main difference is that the advanced bio sequence is more research based and has wet lab experience right away, while the regular sequence has more didactic lectures and they teach you more of the basics from the beginning. Um, uh, for me, I think the uh, advanced bio sequence it was definitely a lot harder um, than the regular sequence, but I know a bunch of people who stayed in it and were able to get um, into the professor's labs there and um, it's pretty much much easier to get that like wet lab experience and be able to say that you have wet lab experience just from the class. Um, and I think people get research opportunities easier that way too. Great, thank you, Karina. Um, another question is, is it difficult for bio majors to study abroad and complete the major requirements? Is it also possible to do research abroad? I can speak on studying abroad. Um, I was actually planning on studying abroad the past um, spring quarter. Um, unfortunately, due to the pandemic that we have incurred, um, I was unable to go. But even through planning um, around going and planning on being in a different country to take focus solely on civilizations courses, um, I still would have been able to complete all of my electives and more. Um, 
and be able to fulfill any and all requirements of both my major and my minor. Great, thank you, Katie. Um, what is it like in regards to track and opportunities while studying bio slash bio adjacent fields without being on the pre-med track? I can take that question. Um, I mean, this is a very personal preference, but I really just love research. Um, so I have been since day one on top of it, um, Googling professors labs um, and finding out what research opportunities are available just like through my own Googling or through Handshake. Um, so I would say there are, there are a lot of those out there. Um, you, all you have to do is really just um, be on top of it and put yourself out there. So at least for me, those are the main ones that I have focused on. In regards to track and like class opportunities, uh, there are plenty, plenty, plenty of classes that are not necessarily related to um, being a pre-med at all. Um, there are a variety of animal related, plant related classes, if that's what you're looking at, or just straight, you know, cell related. Um, there are many different courses because there are multiple tracks, right? So since there is a, two whole different tracks that aren't necessarily considered to be, like there's no sole pre-med track of, of electives, right? So you're, you're taking all of these different electives that all these other people are taking who may or may not necessarily be, be pre-med. So I wouldn't um, say that there is a certain amount of, of electives that are relegated solely to the pre-med or solely to any track necessarily. Um, when you sign up for a track, you do have to take a certain number of electives within that track, especially if you want to get a specialization. Um, but other than that, it is open to your preference and um, what you want to learn. Thank you. Um, the next question is, is the Metcalf internship exclusively for upperclassmen or can a first year apply as well? So I actually had a Metcalf internship my first summer, my summer after my first year, excuse me. And yeah, you can definitely apply whenever. Uh, a lot of them take place during the summer and that's when a lot of the first years that I knew uh, coming out of first year also got the Metcalf internship. But yeah, it's available to all years and it's a really cool opportunity um, to learn about your field. There are also multiple opportunities um, that are solely for first years um, and are are labeled as such. Um, and there will be you know different opportunities on Handshake or within the career advancement emails that specifically say like this opportunity is open to first years. This opportunity is open to first and second years or second years and above. Um, and have different requirements, like how many classes you should have taken within like a bio related field or um, how many general science classes you should have taken, um, anything like that. But yes, it is, there are many that are open to first years. I also participated in one the summer after my first year. Um, and you can get Metcalf funding all the way up through your fourth year, which is what I have continued um, to do since my internship isn't necessarily recognized as a specific Metcalf one, but since it is like real world, uh, you know, opportunities and tasks that I'm doing, um, I am still able to get that funding for, for the internship. Great, thank you. Um, so this question has two parts. Has anyone here done an NESSTP? Yes or no? Maybe a thumbs up. So no. I applied for it and ended up turning it down, but I can talk about the application process. Yes, that'll be so great. I, I'm not, I'm not on it, um, but all of my friends are, um, and so does, so is the other undergrad who works in my lab. So Metcalf isn't the only funding that you can apply for. Um, so you can get, get paid by a stipend, you get paid through a nest step. Um, so nest step, I believe, is specifically for um, undergrads from a more diverse background. Um, I think you can work either in a neuroscience lab or a biology lab, I believe. 
Um, the application process is very similar to a regular MedCap application. Um, they have a set of four questions, uh, 200 or 300 words each. Um, they have a section where you fill out, you know, your basic information, your classes, you need one faculty recommendation letter at least. Um, and there is a interview process as well, where you speak with um, the department head. Um, the difference is that at least this year was that for Metcalf, all you had to do was be interested in research and have a research idea. Um, you did not have to be associated with the lab even to apply for it. Um, and actually one of my friends just had an idea of what research she wanted to do and she wasn't formally onboarded with her lab yet and she still got the NestEP funding. Um, whereas for the Metcalf, um, you had to be associated with the lab and you had to have um, come with a concrete research plan. Um, so NestEP was a more open opportunity, I would say, for a lot of STEM kids this year, especially with COVID going on. I think everyone just was trying to get their life together. Um, so NestEP was great for that, at least. Great, thank you, Phoebe. Um, what is the difference between the neuroscience BA and the neuroscience BS? If anyone here knows. <laughs> um, I mean, oh, sorry, you're the neuro person. You go for it. <laughs> oh, you're good. Um, yeah, Jillian, please uh, add if I forget anything. So the BA is 16 credits and the BS is 19 credits. Um, we also have a BS with honors that has a GPA requirement. Um, with the 19 credits, I think most kids use it to do neuroscience thesis research and you have to produce a thesis at the end of your fourth year uh, for the BS. And I think those are the main differences. Yeah, I would just say in general, BS is more research focused, um, whereas BA is more so uh, open for whatever uh, you would like to pursue with that. Um, so typically I would say like pre-med, you might want to do BA so that you don't have to tack on all these extra requirements if you would like to focus on something else such as a minor. Um, but BS is good if you would, if you know that you want to go to grad school for that specific topic and you know that you want to complete research um, because then, you know, a thesis is, is required with that. Um, a thesis is also required if you would like a specialization within the bio, uh, within the biological sciences division, um, which is what I will be doing. Great, thank you both of you. Um, what is the most intellectually fascinating biology elective? I would say that depends oh, on what you're interested in. <laughs> um, intellectually fascinating. Um, I mean, my field ecology class was intellectually fascinating, but that was because I was very interested in, I'm very interested in doing field work and the types of things that, that we covered. But that was, that's just me. Same for me. I took neuropharmacology, my favorite class ever. We learned all about good drugs, bad drugs, drugs that can be good and bad and how they interact with the brain. It was a neuro and a bio class, I believe. So fascinating, highly recommend. Great professor. Great, thank you. Um, next question is, what is the typical time commitment for biology research? So uh, when I started in my lab, my PI told me that the expectation starting out was 10 hours a week. And I don't know if this is similar in other labs, but uh, I have heard that from other people as well. And then if you'd like, once you show that you can commit that and you would like to commit that, you can increase it. But generally the baseline is 10 hours of research per week. Great, thank you. Um, what is the process like for selecting slash undertaking a specialization? Is there a reason that some are much more credit heavy than others? I would say the process is fairly simple. It's just, you know, like talking with your academic advisor, as well as talking with the department advisors um, to make sure that everyone's on the same page and that you would like to pursue a specific specialization, um, which just means that you are just taking a certain number of courses um, within, within a specific field um, and a certain number of required courses that you have to tack on to, to the 
basic major requirements. Um, is there a reason that some are more credit heavy? I mean, there just may be more, um, more material that needs to be covered and there's a wider variety of things that can be covered within a specific um, minor at least, or within a specific specialization. I know that at least for me, um, the ecology and evolution specialization required um, three additional quantitative classes, as well as, um, you know, I think it was like th anywhere from three to five um, additional electives within the life ecosystems evolution track um, or within the ecology and evolution specialization. Um, so those were just, those were the requirements for me. Um, all the specific requirements are within the course catalog and I'm sure the reasoning is within there as well. Um, but if you have any further questions, I would suggest going to the department advisors. Great, and our last question of the day is going to be, how do I change out of a research position if it is not good? Um, okay, so I did, uh, I did kind of change out of my research position. Um, what I did was I gave my first um, PI um, or boss advance notice um, saying that I really have appreciated my time here, my opportunity here, um, but I wanna do something else. Um, generally, I think that as an undergrad, they're pretty receptive to it just because they understand that you do wanna experience different things and not be stuck with the same lab for four, for four years. Um, if you don't want to do that basically. Um, definitely, yeah, definitely give them advance notice. Um, it's it's going to be kind of awkward. I had to tell my PI while she was pregnant and nearly about to give birth that I was going to be quitting and I felt really bad about it, um, but it was fine. Um, if you really um, want to pursue a new job, like please do it. Like this is uh, your college experience. Um, if you really think something else is really interesting and worth pursuing, um, Go do that. I am really glad that I switched out of my previous job um, and I'm now in the Sheffield lab and I plan on sticking it until I graduate um, for the next two years. So go pursue what you want to pursue. Go ahead, so, Katie. <laughs> I would also say that you can learn something from every opportunity. Like my first lab job, I was studying lichens and doing DNA sequencing every single day. Um, to me, lichens are not that interesting. They're, you know, they stay where they are. They don't move. Um, they're fascinating in and of themselves and all the different like climates that they can go to. And I learned a lot of really cool facts, um, random facts about lichens that I could share with you now, but I'll, I'll hold off on that for you all. Um, but I, I learned that I would rather study something, you know, moving. I'd rather study animals. And I found that I would also rather be doing field work and, you know, have something where I'm not doing the same repetitive uh, process every day. Now that lab work works for so many people. And I just figured out that that would not personally work for me. So I, I would say, even if you, it's not necessarily like, even if in the first like couple of weeks or a couple of months, it's not all that great. Stick it out for a little bit, just to kind of figure out like, Hey, maybe I could get used to this or if it's really kind of rubbing you the wrong way, then yeah, just stay stay professional about it. Um, and yeah, just kind of do what, what Phoebe did. So, yeah. Great, thank you so much. Well, that concludes our panel for today, our webinar. Thank you so much to the panelists for your time and for being here today. And thank you for all the students who joined us. And I hope we answered all your questions. Um, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the communications from the college section of the orientation website. Um, however, if you have any specific questions about a major, um, like we've mentioned many times, please visit the UCMP directory and search for peer mentors via majors, which I will also send in the chat. And with that, I will close out this webinar. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good night.